Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. I did to Dr. Azan bin Asari. So today our group will uh, would like to present our instrument and control project with the title PID control in water level system. So before we start, I would like to introduce our member first. Myself, Muhammad Muawiza bin Mudamistari with the matrix number 20234. Muhammad Zakwan bin Zainal 200941. Muhammad Adib bin Muhammad Isham 200451. And lastly, Muhammad Irshad bin Muhammad Azwardi 196199. So for the introduction for our project, uh, the proportional integral derivative PID controller is a technology used in, in industrial control applications to monitor temperature, flow pressure, speed, and other process variables. So uh, this kind of controller which employs a control loop feedback mechanism to control process variables uh, seems to be the most efficient and stable nowadays. So for our project, we choose water level controller because it is one of the most popular PID controller types in the market nowadays. So these automated, what, automated water level controllers are used to supply the overheat container on a regular basis when it starts or become empty, as well as to regulate the amount of water in it. So once the water level falls below a certain level, automatic water level monitors turn on the motor and the motor turns off when the water level rises significantly above a fixed depth. So the engine will also uh, shut down if, if the sum water is drained until it overflows the overhead tank or if the pump begins to dry out and preserve voltage fluctuations. So uh, actually the system is not only increased process productivity but also contributes to water saving and conservation by monitoring the level and preventing the overflow in the storage system. My name is Muhammad Irshad and I will proceed with the problem statement for this project. So basically, a uh, water level indicator of control system will detect and regulate uh, levels of water in many different systems such as swimming pools, cooling towers and water pump. So PID controller has been applied in the water level control system as it appeared as a tool that is able to perform many functions at one time such as monitor temperature, flow pressure, speed, and other processes variables in industrial control application. It is a device uh, designed to automatically manage a motor in order to maintain a normal water level in a storage tank. So this automatic level, water level control are used to fill the overhead container and control the amount of water in it as it starts to get empty. However, since the PID controller is linear, it is ineffective for strongly non systems and for that many researchers are motivated to apply classic control theory and methodologies due to their systems and are nonlinear and may contain unknown parameters that are cannot be calculated properly so in this project the water level rise is the problem that has to be tackled in this project so uh, for the application of this project we know that the id controls are widely used in industrial control of some control process implementation nowadays. So one of the applications of an intelligent automated level measurement system with a PID controller is the water level control system. So the PID controller will control the process of water flowing in the tank and allowing users to measure and set the appropriate amount of water. So basically the control section and the system will be connected to a control valve and a level sensor. So based on the setting and the, uh, the system may display the trend of water flowing in the tank. So with the calculation and parameters input by the handler, the PID control can control the trend and specific direction for a smooth transfer of the water to required level point. So uh, basically this is the block diagram of normal system of water level controller system where it has the PID controller, the actuator, plan or system and the sensor for the system. So each of us will explain more details about uh, the working principle and function of each system. So firstly, I will explain about the first block diagram, which is the controller and its transfer functions. So uh, a PID controller is a device that manages temperature, flow pressure, speed, and other processing conditions in industrial control application. So uh, proportional turning derivative and derivative Turning and integrative turning are the three basic components of a PID controller. So uh, the function of proportional turning, it it is an it plays an important role in the controller due to having a function to be the main drive for the control loop 
it can be said that the value of the KP uh, can be determined the value of the percentage error for the output. The second one, the integral integral tending, the function is to help to decrease the percentage of the output error in the system. And summing even a small error over time produced to drive signal large enough to move the system towards a smaller error. And lastly, the derivative tending. The function is to help to counter counter counteract the value of the KP and KI when there is output change. However, it will not affect the error for the results. So to obtain the final output result, these three components must be manually changed based on the required value. So that's all from me. I will, so next I will continue with the plot diagram which is the function of the actuator component, which is the actuator is the component in the system to convert the energy such as the electric or pressure, etc. to mechanical energy. So how does the actuator work? Uh, the actuator will recalculate the signal given from the controller to give the new output. Uh, uh, which is the mechanical energy if the signal given is within the actuator limits. So if the signal given is over the limit, it will not respond and there is no saturation. So for example, uh, if the actuator receives a signal, uh, it will make the buff open or close in the water level system. So uh, lastly, uh, the transfer function for the actuator is uh, 0.5 over S plus 2. Okay, so I will continue uh, with the plan of uh, this battery controller system. So, a plan model is, is plan model is the mathematical model that has been used as a control system. In order to produce a plan model, the application of the system must be examined and the corresponding differential equation must be measured. Plan model usually come as a transfer function, either as a first order or second order transfer function. The mathematical formula is expressed as a system fa transfer function will be defined the differential equation output result. So next we will uh, go for the mathematical uh, model for the plan. So as we know, if we want to uh, produce a transfer function, we need to know the application of uh, the uh, application so firstly uh, uh, we since this is the water control level so we need to do uh, we need to know the volumetry of the tank uh, the tank so after that we need to find the accumulation of mass in the tank is the difference between the input flow and output flow rate so qt is the input flow rate and q not is the output flow rate and then we uh, substitute the output flow rate as we find that output flow rate equal to h over r equal to a times uh, h over dt so after we apply the transfer at uh, last plus last laplace transform for the equation we find so we get that the hs over qs equal to r divided by ras plus one so uh, based on the parameters we find in the general our reference so we know that the area is for 450 uh, the h is 3cm uh, so the q and q not also so when we submitted the, all the given information you get the transfer function is gs equal to hs over s equal to 1 over 450s plus 1.0425 so this is the transfer function for the system so for the sensor, a constant value was selected according to the journal and the number of the constant that we use is one. So the sensor also known as a feedback loop in the control system. So next we proceed with the result. So these are the uh, simulation of the MATLAB for the system. Okay, so these are the parameters that we change uh, in order to obtain the graph in the output. So we change the parameters of the PID controller, which is KP, KI, and KD. So there are uh, five uh, conditions that we uh, set up. So the first condition, which is the initial one, we set the value of KP, KI, and KD into one. So the next, the condition number two, we set the KI for 0 0.5. And for the number three, we set the values, we change the values of KI and KD 
and for the fourth condition we change each values of parameter and for the last one uh, we change uh, for the fifth one we uh, fix the uh, values of the parameters uh, same as the in initial condition but we uh, do not include the PID in the system. So the reason we change the parameters is because we want to find the best system response at all operation conditions. So let's proceed with the result. So these are the results that uh, we obtain from the scope or from the output. So the first one is the initial condition, which is condition number one. And this condition number two. So these are the condition number three and condition number four. The last one is the condition uh, without using the PID control in the system. So I'll pass to the next presenter for the discussion. Uh, next, I will continue with the discussion part. So first, uh, by changing the parameters, which is the provisional parameter KP, integral parameter KI, and derivative parameter KD, will affect the system response, such as the rise time, settling time, overshoot, and etc. So the parameters need to be changed in order to get the greatest system response in the operating condition. So uh, there is a uh, five condition that being applied in the results. So uh, for the condition one, where the normal condition is the PID, and the proportional parameter is one, integral parameter one, and derivative parameter is also one. From the result, you can it can be seen that uh, the graph is the steepest slope detected over time. Uh, and for the condition two, we reduce the Ki, which is the integral parameter, and it changed to the gradual, gradual increment compared to the condition one. And for the condition three, we reduce the integral parameter and increase the derivative parameter. So the graph shown is the slope is slightly low compared to the second condition because the derivative parameter is function is to anticipate the error and for condition four uh, we reduce the integral parameter and increase the derivative and provisional parameter so the result shows uh, is uh, slightly same as the condition two and lastly for condition five the graph is obviously uh, different from other condition from one to four because uh, it is not using the PID in the system. In conclusion, the simulation of the PID controller was successfully simulated by using MATLAB simulating to compare the water level control with and without the PID. To summarize, designing a PID controller for the water level control system using MATLAB simulating is convenient. So the water levels mathematically Mathematical model is created using experimental data and the process model is utilized to create the controller. Besides, uh, the PID controller has been widely used uh, in engineering field because of the ability to control many applications in the engineering field. So that's all from us. Thank you.